Welcome everyone to the third of our Back to Business Masterclass events for 2021. Today we're going to be talking you through selling your products and services online. We expect the session to be about 90 minutes long with a mix of videos, interviews and a workshop with one of our GoDaddy specialists. Today's masterclass is being recorded and will be shared on our blog so you can go back and catch up on the details at a later date. To make the session as interactive as possible, please use the tools to speak to each other and the panelists. Please use the Q&A tool to ask your questions and keep general comments within the chat box. So take a moment to warm up by introducing yourself. Tell us who you are, your business name, and if you use any GoDaddy products. Make sure your message is being sent to all panelists and attendees by selecting this option from the drop down in the chat box tool. While you're all getting to know each other, let me quickly run you through the agenda. First up, Ben Law, head of GoDaddy UK and Ireland, will tell you more about GoDaddy and the purpose of these masterclass events. Keep an eye out for the polls as we'd love to hear from you. Then Ben will be joined on the virtual stage by Team GB's number one heavyweight boxer and Olympic medal hopeful for the Tokyo Games, Chev Clark. Chev will share his story of how the world of the Olympic sport has prepared him for life as an entrepreneur. After that, our GoDaddy customer care specialist, Louis Brightman, will deliver a masterclass on selling online. And I'll step in to field your questions to Louis after his presentation. Then we have Daniel Walton, founder of AllPro, for our final interview of the day. Daniel will be sharing his business story and tell us a bit about how being a member of the Herefordshire and Worcestershire Chamber of Commerce helped his business to grow. Finally, a huge thank you for joining us this morning. As mentioned, this is the third event of our 2021 series, so your feedback is incredibly valuable. Look out for a link to a survey at the end of our session. We'd really appreciate it if you could fill this out when we're finished. Well, that's all from me. Now I'll hand over to Ben, who will kick off. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, Frankie. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today for our third virtual Back to Business Masterclass session of 2021. It's great so many of you have been able to join us for this session and I can see already business examples from across the UK uh, that have joined us for, for, for today. And it looks like we're spanning a wide range of entrepreneurial talent and we're really looking forward to sharing some GoDaddy insight and advice around selling online. We expect the session to last around 90 minutes, but as this is a live event, we could run a little earlier or even a little over time. Before we do kick off though, some of you may be wondering who are GoDaddy? Well, let us have a look now. GoDaddy is a mirror to all the dreamers, makers, movers and shakers. And we're on a mission to empower everyday entrepreneurs by giving them all the help and tools they need to grow online. And to help them get back to business. Take Clap for Our Carers, the brainchild of GoDaddy customer Anne-Marie Plass. When tough times struck, she adapted. And the reason why I picked GoDaddy above the other uh, providers is because of the really good reviews and saying how simple and easy to use it was. And that was exactly what I needed, something with speed and something that was easy. She clapped her hands in gratitude for the NHS workers and the nation followed. From the front line to online, Anne-Marie's GoDaddy website took her message to the world. Andrew Walker of Gingerbread Bakery also cooked up a storm. When setting up his business in February, COVID-19 started to take hold. So Andrew turned up the heat on his online activities and he started to gain traction. His secret ingredient? GoDaddy Websites Plus Marketing. Then there was Ruth Bradford of the Little Black and White Book Project. Inspired by her own journey of motherhood and the benefits of black and white images for newborn visual development, Ruth started her own business. During lockdown, she made the difficult decision to stop selling, but gave away free resources online. Something which she says triggered the most amount of traffic ever to her website. GoDaddy, it's the place folks come to name their idea to build a great looking website and to market it to the world. We champion entrepreneurs by delivering the perfect help and tools for their journey. For all the help and tools you need to grow online, go daddy. So as you saw in some of those clips, we do love to feature our customers in our marketing and promotional activities. If you have a business story worth shouting about, we want to hear from you. 
You'll see the social links appearing in the chat box now, but please do share your story and tag us on GoDaddy UK across Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. So we want this session to be as interactive as possible, and we know that's harder over Zoom. Please do keep using the chat function, ask us questions in the Q&A, and look out for some polls that we'll be running throughout the session. So why are we here today? Well, as the UK continues its phased exit from lockdown and businesses return to whatever their version of normal might be, we're here to help. Over the past year, many of our customers' businesses have undergone immense change in how they operate compared with pre-COVID times. And we've seen businesses having to build an online presence for the first time, but also having to adapt to a new set of challenges. We've also seen a trend emerge in the sheer resilience that micro businesses continue to show, remaining both agile, but with a relentless focus on growth. Now, following on from the success of last year's Back to Business series, we're running this new set of events. This time it's a series of targeted masterclass sessions to guide and support businesses across the country as we come to terms with the new normal, sharing insight into how we can help you further your journey as an entrepreneur. With that in mind, I'd love to hear from you now in this quick fire poll. What have you found to be the biggest challenge with taking your business online? Is it creating a website, promoting your business online, selling your products and services online, or maintaining an online presence through other channels? You should be able to see the poll now and cast your votes. So what have you found to be the biggest challenge? <clears throat> creating your website, promoting your business online, selling your products and services online, or maintaining an online presence through other digital channels. We'll just let those results come through. Okay, um, so we know this year has been extraordinarily tough. Um, it's clear uh, that a big focus for this group is how you promote your businesses online. So 44% of the vote, followed by selling your products and services online with 28%. <clears throat> but a fairly, a fairly broad split between the four. Well, you're in the right place today because our Back to Business Masterclass is gonna cover all of those topics as we go through the different parts of the agenda, but with a specific focus on selling your products and services <coughs> online, excuse me. Just a reminder at this point, uh, if you'd like to catch up on the two previous events in the series where we did cover more detail around creating your website and also promoting your business online, you can watch those in your leisure on the GoDaddy UK YouTube channel. Now, let's get into the content for today's session. In March, you may have seen that GoDaddy announced its sponsorship of Team GB for this summer's Tokyo Olympic Games. We're super excited to be working with Team GB as an official partner, fueling our athletes and entrepreneurs as they go for gold. Working with Team GB, we quickly realized there are a number of Olympians who are also business owners. <clears throat> Some have already retired from the world of elite sports and they've built thriving businesses and there are those that are heading to Tokyo this summer at the start of their entrepreneurial journey, just like our first guest, Shev Clark. We're super excited to have Shev with us today. Having cheated death twice, once at six years old, when he fell from a roof playing hide and seek with friends, and also again when he was 18 with a burst appendix, resulting in, in him flatlining in hospital, Shev has got a truly inspirational story to tell. His journey, which includes taking two years away from boxing to drive a lorry, leads him to today as the UK's number one heavyweight boxer, Olympic medal hopeful for the Tokyo Olympics and the budding entrepreneur behind Level Up Nation, his fashion label that sells merchandise and clothing. And of course, we're super proud that Chef is also a GoDaddy customer as well. We're gonna be speaking to Chef about how his GB boxing career prepared him for launching the business, Level Up Nation, and discussing how he's managed to juggle both a demanding athletic schedule alongside his business commitments throughout the pandemic. Welcome Chef. We're thrilled to have you with us today. Hello, how are you doing, Ben? Not too bad, thank you, not too bad. So let, let's get into uh, some of the detail about your story, because for me, just knowing, knowing the outline of it, it's, it's super inspiring and interesting. So can you tell us, um, to start with, a little bit about your story? Um, how have your experience led you to become an Olympic medal hopeful? Um, you know, I was born in uh, Jamaica, and um, I grew up in Jamaica until I was 11. Uh, when I was six years old, um, <laughs> I was living with my dad at the time and uh, come home from school and the guys, you know, kids went out with playing hide and seek. Now there was an unfinished building site across the road and uh, there was a ladder to go upstairs. And I thought, you know what, if I go up on the roof and I move the ladder, <laughs> they won't be able to find me. So I've gone on this site and I've ran up the ladder, but it was a wooden ladder and it was a rotten wooden ladder. And um, as I got to the top, it split. And I fell and impaled on a spike and then I went to the hospital 
and uh, the doctors did ever so well to um, keep me alive. Um, second time, um, when I was, sorry, when I was 11, I then moved to the UK and, um, you know, I grew up, did school and everything else. And when I was 18, I started doing a bit of work experience with my mom's friend. And um, for two weeks, my stomach was hurting. And I just thought, you know, it's just gas, whatever. And um, I came home on a Friday and I said to my mom's friend, stay. So he stayed and um, long story short, he was there and I was going up, walking up my steps in the evening to go and have a shower. And I got to the top of the steps and I fell down. And he said, are you all right? I said, yeah, I'm fine. Um, same thing again, I went up and I fell back down. And um, then we went to the hospital and um, I got to the hospital and I was in so much pain and I'm not ashamed to say it. I was like, please, <laughs> please help me. And the doctor gave me the tablets. And uh, next thing I woke up in the morning and my mom and friends was there with uh, flowers and everything. And I just remember the doctor coming over me and he had the, uh, the, the board and a pen. And he was like, Mr. Clark, we had to do everything we could to save your life. And it turned out my appendix had um, burst and um, when it burst, it poisons you. So it turned out flat land on the table and um, well, I'm alive, so grateful. Well, and you've, uh, you've, you've come quite a long way since, yeah. since cheating death a, a couple of times. And you, you, you're now in, I guess, the full throes of, of training for the Olympics. Yeah. How's, how's the training going? Uh, training's going well. Um, you know, with the, the pandemic happening. So last year we had the Olympic uh, qualifying event, which was being held in London during uh, March. And um, it already it had already take, started going and... Um, Literally, the day before I was supposed to fight and qualify, um, everything was shut down. So it was kind of a, a worrying at the time. But, you know, uh, team, team GB and GB Boxing put so much stuff in place for us to survive and, and thrive throughout the, the pandemic. And um, now we're in a good place. And um, at the end of the month, I'll be going back to the qualifiers to qualify. Nice. Sounds, sounds good. And obviously, super supportive from all of us uh, in, in your success there. Thinking more, more about your business and your, or your journey to become a, a business owner, what, what drove you to set up a business with, with, with the boxing seemingly going, going so well? And was it, was it always a, an ambition of yours to become a, an entrepreneur? Yeah, I, I think um, as a kid, I used to sell um, chocolate in school. I used to get the train and I used to um, buy the chocolate from the shop. So I've always been entrepreneurial like, in, in that way. And um, when I started boxing, um, again in 2016 because I took a two-year period out so when I started boxing again my friends said to me you know you need a name for yourself and I was just like oh, I'm sure and it was like no you need a name and uh, I got a name and I started um, uh, training training a lot obviously and mm -hmm. I always used to say this word level up so that was the first time I had social media and every time I, I said level up or every so often somebody would mention me oh I like that so then I got a t-shirt <laughs> That said level up and uh, then folks was like, oh, where can I get your T-shirt? And I was like, um, so then what I started doing is every three months, I'd create a batch of orders. And at the end of the three months, I'd ship them out to the, the, the people that had ordered them. Um, so then over the, over the um, lockdown period, it kind of gave me more time to focus on that. So then uh, I had a website, but it didn't have a, a shop on, on or anything like that. So it kind of made it difficult um, to, to um, sell the stuff. And then the opportunity came to um, work with GoDaddy. And uh, man, it, has it been a lot easier? You know, it's, it's streamlined stuff. And, I'm, uh, and, and customers are flooding in right now, to be fair. That's brilliant to hear. It's great to hear. And I guess the fashion and, and kind of the the area that you're operating in from a business perspective, it, it, it's quite a crowded, crowded marketplace. Like what, what opportunities are you seeing for kind of scale it, scaling up level up nation in, in that kind of competitive arena? Um, for me, it's changing the, the business model, right? So yeah. as an athlete, um, you generally, you become um, a, a well-known athlete, et cetera, et cetera. Then the, a brand comes to you and say, oh, I would like to do a deal with you as such. I figured if I had my brand from when, when I started as nobody and I build it, um, you know, um, with the help of GoDaddy, et cetera, now, um, so, um, social media, et cetera, then when, I'm, when I do become that notable athlete, rather than signing to a, 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 another uh, company, 
I can be a partner with a company. So it's changing the business model for me. That's the way I'm thinking. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, it feels sounds sounds a sensible approach, and we're we're looking forward to seeing you get to those get to those levels. I guess the one of the key questions I, I I'd love to get your insight on is <clears throat> preparing for an Olympics, preparing for qualifiers, being being a professional athlete, kind of mm-hmm. full time. How are you how are you finding the time to to run that business? It it sounds like it integrates to a degree, but have you got any top tips about how you prioritize? Um, for me, right. Um... There is a narrative that, you know, a business is a business and then an athlete is an athlete. But in my eyes, an athlete is a business. So everything I do, um, I'm always selling myself. Even though I'm preparing for an Olympics, my image and everything else that I do has to be professional. So, you know, as I said, you have to go about it just like you'd go about a business in in a professional manner. So, you know, when when the time comes, um, as you said, to scale, it'll, it'll make it a lot easier. That makes sense. And you've touched on the list a little bit in terms of the, some of the challenges you've had at the start. But how, how did you approach that? How, how did you overcome those those challenges of, of getting your business up and running, I guess? Um, you know, when when you uh, face um, obstacles or, or challenges, you know, it's a thing of persistency and consistency and just knowing you have an end goal. And regardless of what happens, you're always going to level up. And I look at level up as like a graph, right? A line graph, you go up and then you're going to get knocked down. Then you're going to go up and then you're going to get knocked down. And I, I think I heard something from Elon Musk the other day. And he said, um, if you're not failing, you're not innovating. You're not progressing, right? And I think there's a um, there's a narrative of you know success. There's no failure in success. But all the greats and all the people that have achieved stuff have failed on their way to becoming great. I think I think especially I can relate to that running running a couple of businesses and, and it's it's often the failures that help you learn and, and progress for sure. Um, you, you've touched on this a little bit already, but <clears throat> given we're we're trying to focus on, on selling online, mm-hmm. you talked about how you developed in the start in terms of having a site for presence and, and and social media. But how have you how do you continue to develop the way you sell online? How does your website play a part in your day to day sales activity? So. Number one, it makes it a lot easier because it's just streamlined things. So now people can go to my social media channel or they can just go directly to my website whenever they type my name in on um, the internet or if I pop up on YouTube, et cetera. Um, Yeah, they can go straight to my my website rather than having to search around a block to come to me. You know, it's just made it more of a direct approach because let's face it, people haven't got time these days to be going left, right all over the place they want to just go direct yeah makes sense and, and in terms of selling your, your merch online <clears throat> what, what's more important for you is it is it about customers finding out about a new product line or is it about trying to expand your your sales channels and reach to market for me it's um being authentic and 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 letting people mm-hmm. see who i am because on my website it, there's a there's an about me section that tells a bit about my, my life story and people can go and and check that out and then there is the shop so you know uh, I'm not just looking for people to just come and buy stuff I want it to be an authentic thing where they follow my journey and you know as things develop they they go oh back to the website and and check things out yeah it makes sense and just just thinking about that that broader kind of channels and and, and marketing you you talk about social a lot and I I know you're you're active on Instagram Mm -hmm. how how did you build up your, your following on Instagram and have you got any top tips for for the, for the business owners joining us today? Um, how I built it up, I think just be authentic. You know, um, one thing I've never wanted to do and, I, and I, I'm not a big fan of is, is being perfect or, or perceiving to be perfect because let's face it, none of us are perfect. So just be authentic to yourself. Hello? I'm back. Sorry, <laughs> the, the joys of Zoom. <laughs> oh, okay. Get somewhere. I'll, yeah, I'll start. I'll start over. I was saying that the the way I built my um, network is be authentic. Let's yeah. let's let's be authentic. There's a image of a social media which everything has to be perfect. Now let's face it, none of us are perfect. Just 
just be honest to you because let's face it, there's other people out there that are simil similar to you. And um, all you need is that one person and then that one person will become two, per two people and, and so forth, you know? Yeah, no, and, and I think that's clear from, <clears throat> from kind of f f following you and what you've been up to from a social perspective, that, that authenticity, and you, you've used that word a few times to describe your own brand, it's, it's organic. Yeah. And <clears throat> I guess the, 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 the one thing that comes with building up a, an audience is having to engage with that audience. Do you, do you schedule time in your diary to, to have that back and forth with customers or, or how, how do you find, I guess, just, just making sure customers and, and your audience are engaged with what you're doing? Uh, <laughs> you'll be surprised, but before, and, and still to this day, I am not a big fan of social media. I, I, I'm a very private person. But I know that there's people that want to be on the journey with me. So I make time for them. So whether it will be a part of my training session in the day, um, at my home life, I try to keep very private. But my training stuff, anything to do with boxing, I, I'll share. Or even just going back on, on previous posts and looking at all the people that liked it and just go through and try and like some of their stuff just to show appreciation. Yeah, and I think we we see that a lot with, with success stories on social. That 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 engagement and making making people making your audience feel like you, you are engaging with them and keeping yeah. keeping them up to date for sure. Yeah. We hear in, in the I guess the entrepreneurial world, and we've referenced this word a few times already, but the the growth mindset. Um, what what does growth mindset mean to you, and what should aspiring entrepreneurs do to ensure they they've got one as well? The growth mindset is just to level up. You know, um, whatever you've achieved today, you can achieve better tomorrow. You know, I never get up and think, oh, um, you know what? I did that last year. I'm the man because let's face it. And, and this is just my personal opinion. What, you've, what I achieved last year, nobody really cares about that no more. And, and, and you have to just look to go and achieve something else. And that's just how I, I live it. And that's why I say level up because I never, I'm never... Um, content with what I, I achieved yesterday or last year I do, I'm always looking for what else I can do nice you know? yeah and, and, and you're, you're, you're clearly driven uh to keep to keep succeeding but how, how have you stayed focused on on getting success especially during during a year of pandemic you know um, I'm glad you asked that question and it's just my grandparents I think my, my grandparents and my, 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 my parents they um they were very hardworking people, right? And just a little, little small story. My, my grandparents grew up in Jamaica and they had uh, 12 kids, right? Now they weren't wealthy people in any instance, but one thing they, they did make sure is that the family ate and that, that was the, the main thing. And um, for me, it's just to do them proud. Yeah. You know, I've had the opportunity to, to be in England now and it's just not making that go to waste and, and um, just do everything in my power to to extend their brand because let's let's face it <laughs> they are kind of a brand as well yeah yeah that no, yeah. makes sense um there's, there's a question from the audience in terms of what, what's the best piece of advice you've been given that stuck with you the best piece of advice um I, i'd say um yeah one just be authentic you know um, you're not going to please everybody. That, that is the one thing that will make you very unhappy. Just be authentic to you and yeah, you, you, you grow, be authentic, be consistent and be persistent. Nice. Nice. That's a lovely mantra to, to take away with us. Um, we're just about at time for the session. Um, if there are any other questions to pop in, I'll just have a quick look through the, through the chat uh, and the Q and A now. Couple of comments about your your inspiring story, uh, <clears throat> knowing where to keep the boundaries, um, and some parts of your life maybe maybe not for public consumption. And I think obviously that that's something you, you've you've covered as well. And authenticity, I think, resonating resonating well with the audience. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Chef. We we are just about at time now for this part of the segment. It's <clears throat> it's been brilliant to hear all about your journey. Um, thank you for sharing your, your business mantras, your your tips for managing a, a business uh, on the side of, of another successful profession. Um, thank you from everyone here today, especially from, from everyone at GoDaddy and the audience. Best of luck for Tokyo. Uh, we're, we're super, super excited to see you in action. 
Thank you very much. And just um, best of luck to everybody that's trying to level up, you know, and, and running their own business. And yeah, just all the success to you. No, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us again, Chef. Have a lovely day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. So those are great, great stories and tips uh, there from, from Chef and hopefully something for everyone to take a point away from. I'm now delighted uh, to welcome Louis Brightman uh, to the session. Louis is one of our own GoDaddy guides. <clears throat> He's been with us in the business for a few years, helping everyday entrepreneurs just like yourselves get set up and ready to thrive online. Louis is going to be running a masterclass, uh, showing you everything you need to know about selling your products and services online. Uh, so I'll hand over to you now, Louis. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ben. Really interesting chat with Chev. Great to have you here today, Chev, as well. And good luck for this year. Um, yeah, see some really interesting people coming in the chat today. Uh, hopefully today this is uh, going to be useful for everybody. Uh, we'll talk a bit about how we can promote your business online, seeing as that's what the most the most of you seem to be struggling with, um, is getting yourself found out there. So yeah, hopefully by the end of today, we're going to add, add a bit more to your strategies as to what you're doing. So today we're going to talk a bit about the start of your customer journey. So where are people going to find you? Um, let's let's take a step back and think about uh, what Jeff said. You know, what, what's what's the journey your customers are going on? What's your story, and, and why do you do what you do? Uh, we'll touch on helping customers find you. So making sure your fundamentals are in place, like your your Google profile, um, any other social media platforms. Is everything uh, consistent with your branding? And then once you find your audience. What do you need to have in place, you know, to get them over the line? And we'll touch on that and, and how to close the deal. And then um, for the people out there who are maybe just starting out, we'll talk a bit about the basics and how to take payments and uh, what to do after the after the sale and things like that. So hopefully today you'll learn something. Now, we all know of last year, um, some of us want to forget it, but we can't deny it's had a huge shift in, in human behaviors. Everybody's going online. Everybody wants to, to get something delivered, especially if you, you're not allowed to go to your local shops. So um, we've seen a huge increase in micro businesses, small businesses, um, getting online, whether you're selling a service or a product. Um, so it's just, you know, it's if you were in doubt before last year, now your mind has to be made up. There's no, there's no, um, there's always going to be benefits of you getting yourself online, no matter what you do. So <clears throat> starting off, I think it's very key uh, to understand where your audience is, you know, uh, how to find them and, and how to understand what, what is the problem you're solving for them and how can you put yourself into that gap and, and into the forefront of their minds as someone who can help them. So some of you guys today I see enough for hypnotherapy and psychology services and counseling. I'm sure there's a huge demand for that, you know, with the past year we've had. So look at these um, platforms online, like Yahoo forums and Pinterest and all these other places like Facebook and, and LinkedIn, like what kind, of, what kind of demographic are you looking for? And just put yourself out there to find where they are. Um, and then build value from that. So what does that look like? Well, uh, a customer of mine here, uh, these are two of my customers, one selling uh, family pajamas, <laughs> small family run business, selling lovely little treats for all the family. She's constantly on Facebook, you know, letting her customers know, private messaging families and letting them know that her prices are better than competitors and offering people discounts for sharing her posts uh, and liking their activity. And that kind of interaction is really valuable because... Um, you know, everybody uh, likes to speak to the business owner. They feel like they're getting a better service if you're speaking to the person owning the business. And social media gives you the chance to sort of show that uh, and get in touch with your people. And uh, yeah, so what other value could you give? Like if you're a coach or a hypnotherapist, that could maybe be a blog page. So if you write a blog and you're talking about the addictions to smoking and uh, how lockdowns affected people, you don't realize how important that one blog post could be to somebody and um, how many people could find it online, you know, with all your, with all the amount of words you can fit inside a blog post. If you're offering free information like that, that's going to build your reputation and, and get people to trust you. And eventually that's going to turn into revenue for you and customers. 
So find out what appeals to them. Um, <clears throat> so we've, we've talked about the coaching side of it. If you're giving out free info, if you're a shop online and you're selling, you know, could be could be sustainable accessories. I've seen somebody there today selling some sustainable accessories. Uh, what are you what are you going to give to your people? Are you going to let them know how sustainable they are? Are you going to offer them a discount when they come onto the page? Um, so find out what appeals to them and, and give them as much value as possible across all the platforms. Are you easy to be found? So I just wanted to touch briefly. We've talked a lot about SEO um, for the last uh, on, on the last webinar quite a bit. So check that one out. Uh, but it is very important, you know, and having a Google business profile like what you can see here. This is absolutely free to set up. So you would go to Google My Business, set it up with your business name. And as you can see there, uh, anyone looking on Google, which is where all the millions of people are searching for the most, you can provide your, your ranking out of five stars, your phone number, your business info. It's all available from a free profile online. And this is a customer of mine, Amanda. She's fantastic at what she does. She does hypnotherapy and coaching. And she's always telling me that she's doing everything we've talked about there. She's putting herself out there organically on her platforms, reaching out to people and um, look at her profile. You know, everything's in place there. So if somebody does find her, um, you know, it's all sitting pretty and they can reach out to her mobile phone there, as you can see, and start doing business. So um, have these things in place, guys. And, you know, it's, it's going to benefit in the long run. So... Assuming you've found your audience, you know where your people are, um, you've got your website in place. Marketing is very crucial for selling online. You've got to get your name out there. So what does that look like? Well, we've talked about your blog and, and how to get yourself out there. There's actually a lot of tools that GoDaddy provide now. So if you built your website with the GoDaddy website builder, you've probably seen in your dashboard, we have this new tool called Over which essentially allows you to create a professional post, you know, really standing out there and just looking ahead of the game. Uh, as you can see from the post there, this is all included with your web builder package. And if you're on, you know, a different platform like WordPress or any of the others, it's not very hard to, to get this platform set up. It's, it's not a very expensive either, uh, but it's really going to make a difference to your postings. As you can see there, you're going to look 10 times more professional when you're sending out to like the likes of Instagram and Facebook your products. And then of course, selling online, my brother's business, one of the main um, sources of his customers would have came from a Google ad. And so paid advertisements, if you haven't got involved in paid ads yet, check it out because this just shows you how easy it is for you to set up uh, if it's a Facebook ad. As you can see, you can budget yourself really low if that's what you need to do. Rise it as, as you grow as well. But it's so simple to set up and it's a no brainer because a paid ad is just getting your name out there in front of the front of the people that matter. And um, yeah, it's gonna give you that head start as opposed to just growing organically. So every business on Instagram, they're all doing paid ads as well. These are just some examples of some stuff that will go by your feed. So if your audience is on Instagram, by all means, get yourself some paid ads on the go. And what we talked about last week is sit down and, and review the performance of your ads, review the, the, um, the demographics you're targeting. There's always things you can tweak and change. And like Jeff says, no one's going to nail this first time and be perfect. You've got to learn from your failures each time. And that would be my advice when you're looking at paid ads is start off slow and improve as you go. Along. Same for Google. You cannot avoid the fact that Google is the best place for anybody to find any business. Um, you know, they've completely monopolized it, haven't they? So paid ads, uh, again, every top company is doing it these days. And there's no, um, there's no customers out there that can avoid them either. They're always going to show up at the top. So it works on the same principle. You can put up uh, 10 pounds per day, less than that, but you're talking a, a budget that can suit yourself. And uh, you're going to get yourself on Google targeting certain areas and targeting certain keywords that are associated with your business. And there is tools within Google that allow you um, to actually find out what people are searching for, what areas of the country they're searching for it. And for those of you that want to get a bit more techie, there's 
you know, different variations in your keywords. So if your keyword is hypnotherapy, you know, some of the variations might be hypnotherapy in Glasgow or hypnotherapy classes or hypnotherapy treatment or hypnotherapy for addiction. You know, there's so many different uh, ways that people can type in the search phrase and Google actually has the tools for you to actually, you know, narrow down. This is not what I'm after. This is what I'm after. Um, so again, I would just, I would just advise people to log in, set it up and go through the review process. Like we said, set it up, see how it goes, review it. Because I know from experience that this could be a main source of income. And, you know, while you're building up your organic results and while you're building up your, your customer base, this is going to keep you a steady flow of, of traffic coming to your site. So definitely check it out. Doing all this, guys, look, you're sort of creating a big funnel, all coming through to your site. Um, so you've got the word of mouth, people chatting about you on Facebook, you're reaching out to people, and then you've got your paid ads on Google, and maybe you've got a YouTube ad as well. Um, so that's what you're doing, guys. You're, you're directing everybody to your site and try and keep the message and your branding consistent across all of these channels as well. Um, so moving on to closing the deal. <clears throat> so we'll talk a bit about the actual website itself and what actually is important to have on your site. And I think Chev's story is absolutely fantastic. It's so inspiring and really great to have him today. I'm sure everyone's really delighted to see him giving us some words today. Um, but his story is incredible. And, and to have it laid out in the site like that, I came across um, Chev's website once we finished building it for him. And honestly, I was just so, I, I could not wait to buy myself a Level Up t-shirt. So Chev, I'm supporting the cause, my friend. Um, because that's the whole thing is like, people make decisions based on emotions, you know? Like uh, a lot of the companies I work with and um, you know, the people that are being successful, they have a really cool story as to why they're into what they do, you know? And, they're obviously like solving a problem that they have themselves a lot of the time, you know? So don't be afraid to put your unique tone of voice onto your site and really tell the story of why you do what you do as well. And that's exactly what you can do with your blogs as well. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, once your site uh, is built, is everything easy to find? So after reading Chef's story, as you can see there, it's nice and clear, nice and easy to see where am I going to go next? How can I support Chev? Boom, there it is. Um, and it's nice and clear, easy on the eyes. And uh, like he said, it's, it's made a huge difference in streamlining the interaction and streamlining the whole sales process for his people. So awesome stuff. Another thing <clears throat> um, for you people out there that maybe have some sustainable goods or um, any products that you're, physical products that you're selling or digital courses that you're selling, Give as much info in your product descriptions and try to tell a story within that as well. Like I really like this example here because this guy is um, telling jokes. Um, he's explaining uh, how to use the product. He's talking about some anecdotes about when he used the product himself. And it's just, it's really, really personal, you know, and when I'm reading it, I feel like someone's in the room with me telling me about it. And it just builds up a bit of trust. You know, the more effort I see that a business owner has put into what they're doing, you know, instantly as human beings, we see that and we respect it. We think, you know what? Yeah, um, so someone's being passionate here. That shows they know what they're talking about. Um, and if you've got, like I said, if all the other things are in place, like people can go and reference you on other channels, reference you on your blog posts, this is all just going to solidify the belief in what you're selling, basically. And um, I think, um, what was it? Somebody asked a really good question um, about how to turn visitors into customers um oh sorry how to, how to get people to stop scrolling and engage and i think um that's really key is like using images that will attract attention so this image here is not a bad image of the product is it it's got a nice white background we can see it but if you're showing images like that really show the product being used so maybe don't just take the picture on your iphone um Get a, get, a good, get a good camera phone or get a good camera and take some proper pictures of your products. So it'll really make a difference to people when they're browsing. Keeping the engagement going. So this is another uh, easy thing you can do for your online shop. If you're shopping, if you built your shop with GoDaddy, there's a simple feature where you've seen it on other stores online where 
if you're scrolling up one product, it'll show you a bunch of other products that are related. So it's really simple to set these little, little extras up, um, depending on what platform you use. And little things like this, you can always phone GoDaddy and we can advise you and guide you on how to set these things up as well, to bear in mind. So if you haven't seen things like this yet, uh, just give us a call, you know, and we'll help you, give you a little walkthrough. But again, all the main um, imagery you see here, this is on a GoDaddy site. You can see there's a discount applied to the, to the product as well. And it scribbles out the full price, puts in the little discounted price. These are all things that are sort of done for you. So if you've got a good product and you've got a good brand, and honestly, the tools are there to make everything as easy as possible so that you just have to flick the switches on and off, essentially, which is how I look at it. Um, so moving on. Elizabeth, um, sorry, guys. Just trying to find, oh, there it is. So it was, uh, Joanna Francis wanted to know, um, the best thing about product pages, how to, how to really create a good product page. And I think Donna was saying how to convert someone browsing at a product into a paying customer. So three really good questions there and testimonials, having testimonials on your website, especially on the product pages. Think about uh, yourself when you're shopping online. Um, I mean, reviews are one of, the, one of the best ways to sort of build a bit of belief in the product because it's coming from a customer you can see clearly there's a, there's a name and a five star or four or five star review sitting beside it. So have your have your reviews sitting on your product pages. I would recommend. It's very easy to set this up as well. Um, so that would be my advice there to, to turn browsers into buyers. Is have the have all the information there on the product page. So just to touch on what Chev has, has said to us all today, like this really relates to that appeal. People remember how you make them feel, you know. Um, I can really relate to Chev and his upbringing. He's moving from one country to another at the age of 11. Similar story of myself moving from England to Ireland at that age. And um, just having that, knowing that you need to prove something to people and or having a, a reason as to why you're trying to achieve what you're trying to achieve, um, that's really going to make a difference to people. So whatever you're passionate about, um, get it out there, you know, and, and don't leave something unsaid. Um, Maxine raised a good point earlier in the chat about saying you don't need to give all of yourself away, but focus it on the business. You know, whatever's related to your business and your and your audience, put that out there as best you can. Um, so that makes it easy for people to, to get onto your side. So a few things to get people over the line. Um, it's you know, we can't deny we're competing with Amazon. We're competing with all the big brands out there. Um, you know, so many millions of new businesses online. So what are you doing to really get people on your side? Are you offering them discounts? Uh, this is a cool way. When people come onto your site, you can literally have it so that your website pops up with a message saying 10% off. Um, you know, or you could specify what the discount is. But this means that when someone comes onto your site, you're instantly driving engagement that way. You know, um, so this this is a good um, this is a good way for you to build up your mailing list as well. Your mailing list is how you can directly interact with your customers. So, um, yeah, just turning your general website visitors into customers. This is fantastic for that because I think Neil was asking. Uh, he gets a lot of traffic, but he wants to convert them into customers. Neil, I'd maybe make sure that you've got these things in place, like. Is there any disclaimers about what you're offering that you haven't revealed yet? Is there something um, about your shipping your customers don't know? Or maybe you could offer them a discount like this when they sign up to your site. Um, but that would be my advice is go, for, go through the journey from start to finish and try and spot any gaps there, you know? So anyone who hasn't set up yet, um, accepting payments is really, really simple. I just wanted to show everyone today uh, this is for the website builder with GoDaddy. And just to show you how easy it would be, we work with two main providers, uh, Square and Stripe. So these are able to take any type of bank card from anywhere in the world. Um, I think Olga and Richard were asking about how to do these payments safe and secure. There's nothing that you need to do to ensure that it's safe and secure. It's pretty much done for you. And just so we, everybody knows, 
any payment provider is going to take roughly between, as you can see there, 1.4% all the way up to like 2.5% for a transaction. And just to clarify, that's just a payment provider that, that would uh, do that, same as a shop. And there's no commissions or anything that go to GoDaddy. So we're one of the main platforms that don't take any commission for any of your sales. And that's just, I just wanted to make that clear. That's a normal, a normal fee there when you're setting up a payment provider. So if you're on uh, WordPress or any other platform, you just got to, you know, find out which payment provider you want to go with and, and set it up. It's quite simple. Um, so moving on. We can't forget about shipping. So in the GoDaddy Builder as well, this is a little screenshot. Uh, you've got all your options to be able to set up shipping costs. So if you're offering free delivery to people around your area, that option's there. Um, and then you can really specify, like, is there shipping free? Is it free over a certain amount of dollars spend? Um, is it free to certain countries? All the options are there. And I would just say, make sure you have it all set up there and make it nice and clear on your website. So, for example, if you set up free shipping, I wouldn't just leave it set up as free shipping. I'd maybe put something on my home page or put something on my product pages, just letting them know, maybe a banner at the top. Just to explain, by the way, free shipping, you know, because everybody loves that and you're just making it dead easy for people's eyes to find the right info. So, cool. So, we're nearly at the end of this presentation here, people. And um, yeah, so, so we've talked a bit about the basics of your website, what to have in place on the product pages, but mainly to get yourself found, it's uh, you've got to be a bit uh, prepared to put yourself out there. And, as I say, what that looks like interacting on social media, writing a blog post, keeping your website updated as the seasons go along as well. So just to let everybody know, GoDaddy um, are one of the biggest and most trusted um, companies in this field. And we do have a service team as well. So for any people out there who have a website on WordPress, uh, we've got a WordPress premium support team that can solve WordPress problems for you and fix issues as well. On the other token, if you've built your website with the GoDaddy website builder, we've got a maintenance service, which essentially means that for a small fee every month, our team will make unlimited changes for you. And that includes up building new pages, adding in new content, adding in new products. And every time we make an update, we'll also help you with the SEO side of it too. So this is a new service that we're offering to help people to keep on top of it. So maybe if we're doing that, you can focus on your social media. But at the end of the day, uh, those are our paid support services. We've always got free advice and free support. So if you're on these platforms and you just want to chat, just want guided in the right direction, give us a shout. And that's what we're all about here as well. And one more thing to touch on, guys. Anyone who is just starting out um, and you haven't actually built your website yet or got your branding in place and you're sort of just wanting to learn a bit today, GoDaddy also can build your website from start to finish, whether that's on uh, our website builder, which is our own, our own platform. Very, very easy to use and intuitive. Or for something a bit more advanced, um, WordPress, if everyone knows what WordPress is, it's the largest platform to build a website. GoDaddy have a specialist team to build sites on both of these platforms from start to finish. And the consultation with us to find out if you're a good fit is absolutely free. So just give us a shout and see if we can work for you. And at the very least, you'll get some free advice, guys. So cool. That's it for me today. Uh, check out the other webinars as well recently where we talked about SEO and how to create a website. But I hope that was helpful today, guys. Thank you, Louis. That was brilliant. I've definitely learned a lot myself. And now I really want to set up an online shop. So uh, lots of inspiration there. Um, we've had some great questions coming in as you've been talking, so I'm going to pull out a few for you now. Um, so let's have a little look here. Um, so, let's have, okay, so Lorraine Gabriel asks, how do I transfer my website to GoDaddy? Okay, so that's an interesting question because um, if you've already got a website built, uh, I would want to know like how long has it been built for and things like that. But I mean, it's quite simple. If you were prepared to, to start the website again or transfer it to us, if it's on WordPress, we can literally keep the website as it is and just move it so that it's 
basically looked after by us. It's hosted by us. If you've built your website with another uh, website building tool, like there's some other big brands out there, um, I would I would suggest the only way you would really change a website is if you're going to go from a web builder up to say WordPress. Otherwise, I wouldn't really worry about transferring your site from one web builder to another. Um, but the best thing to do, Lorraine, is give us a call, show us your website, and have a detailed conversation with us. I would say. Brilliant. Yeah, it's good. We have so much resource available at GoDaddy, so hopefully we'll be able to get that sorted for you nice and quick when you get in touch with yeah. us. Amazing. So more questions. Lucy asks, any tips on how to describe a product on social media posts to attract sales? Yeah. So if you think of the bullet point um, effect, so instead of bullet points, maybe have some nice emoji stars. So you've got five stars. What's your five selling features? What well, is your price better? Is the, the materials you're using uh, really uh, sustainable or popular? Um, do you offer So make it simple. So put in, in bullet point form, what are the key features here that you're offering? And just be consistent. So maybe post it once a week and, and uh, approach people as well. So you may have a professional post, but interact with people on private messages too, like chase people down and, um, and chat to them. Yeah, absolutely. And as you said, good imagery can do a lot of the selling for you, right? Yes, obviously include a nice image to go along with that. Um, so if, you're, if you've seen earlier the social media post creator, that's going to allow you to do both. Have a nice image with the info over the top. So that'd be my advice is to use a tool like that. Brilliant. Um, Honora asks, I mean, you mentioned it briefly, but can you talk a bit about what WordPress is in a bit more detail? Yeah, so if we think... Um, Back in the day, a website is basically coded. Yeah, you have to be a genius to put one together and code it from scratch. So these days we've got GoDaddy. Um, there's other big brands out there as well that have these tools basically built for you. So all you have to do is like Facebook, click on what you want to change and it's really easy. So WordPress is the most advanced version of, of these kinds of web builders. So WordPress works a bit like the Google App Store in the sense that you would log into WordPress and you would have thousands and thousands of different apps and plugins that you download to make your website do different things. Whereas if you use a GoDaddy web builder, for example, this is um, a lot easier to use because we've got rid of all the apps and we just have everything built for you in one place, you know? So it's really about high tech savvy you are, but WordPress is free. You can set it up, have a little play with it, and uh, we build websites from start to finish on WordPress too. So again, give GoDaddy a call, have a chat with us, and um, we can tell you about what we're what we can do for you as well. Brilliant. That's a nice clear explanation there. Um, Maxine says, um, I have a slight problem in that if I give too much free information, say in a blog post, um, I end up giving more or less giving away my tools of the trade. So what kind of advice I suppose do you have on balancing that or potentially making that content exclusive, but still getting the benefits of a blog post from it? Well, I don't think really that's a problem, Maxine, because you're, you're going to get known as a really helpful uh, individual, like the more you do that. So I'm obviously not fully aware of what you do, Maxine, but I think if I was approaching, um, a therapist or a coach or anything like that to, to basically talk about myself. <laughs> the last year we've had it has been something I've considered. Um, but if I was able to read like really in depth for free, like on someone's website about what they know about and how they've helped people and, and what they plan to do, all that's going to do is build more trust. So again, it's, it's down to you and, and like your business. I don't want you giving away your secrets and things like that, but I would say the more value, more value you give away, the more of a following you're going to get at the end of the day. So think about uh, what happens after they see that value. How can you give them a call to action to take the next step with you, you know, and when you're giving away this info. Yeah, that's good advice. The, the power of the tease as well, right? So you want to show people a little bit of what you've got so they keep coming back for more. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Um, Mark Greenstreet asks, do you have a view on how to maximize the streaming speed of videos to help retain client attention levels? Because that's true, isn't it? Often videos, if they're too long, can have a bit of drop off. Like what advice would you have for making video content? 
for making video content, I think, you know, your strategy has to be you're showing a problem and how you can affect or change that problem for someone. So that can be quite short. I think like, you know, videos that succeed, they're probably less than a minute long. Um, but did you say this was live streaming? I can't remember the question. Oh, no, just streaming a video, streaming speed. So. Yeah, so just make sure you've got a, a reliable host. Um, so whoever's hosting your website, um, you know, make sure that you've got a good hosting plan to support that. And yeah, just, just keep, keep the videos fairly short and sweet, you know. Um, that would be my advice there for video content. Great, and our very last question, I'm sorry we can't get to all of them today, but we'll do our best to answer in the chat. But um, we have a question here that says, I'm not very tech confident. How can GoDaddy help me set up my online shop? Okay, um, well, if you wanted to use, uh, depending on what your business is, we've got um, two great tools here. We've got the GoDaddy website builder, plus we've got a, an offer we're doing since last year. Well, this is pretty interesting, right? So if you haven't built the website yet, you could phone us, tell us what you do, and buy the web builder as if you were gonna do it yourself. So what GoDaddy would do different is we'll actually build four to five pages of your shop absolutely free of charge, believe that or not. I would implore you to give us a call and ask about that because it's a way we give you a head start. So that's on our GoDaddy web builder. So you could have an easy to manage, easy to use shop within a week. And all, all you're gonna pay for is the platform itself and you'll get a bit of free help building it. Or uh, depending on what it is you're doing and, and how much, um, how you want your website to look and feel, we offer the same service on WordPress it's a bit more advanced, so it's not a free build on WordPress. But again, if you chat with us, it's absolutely free for you to find out um, the benefits of both and how we can help you. So I definitely give us a call first. OK. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Louis. And I appreciate that was a lot to cover in a short period. Um, so for those of you yeah. watching that have specific questions, do continue to share them in the chat box and we'll do our best to get to them. We'll also be sharing Louis slides on our GoDaddy blog. So keep an eye out for those. There'll be a link in the chat. So um, existing ones coming soon. Thanks, Louis. Thanks, everybody. So after that inspiring talk, we wanted to share some of our latest GoDaddy research into how micro businesses are faring across the UK. You may or may not consider yourself a micro business, but what we mean by that is a business with, with less than 10 employees. So you could be. Now, more than a year since the first lockdown, GoDaddy State of the Nation data confirms that entrepreneurs have continued to defy the odds. And there has been a increase of 21% in new ventures across the nation. So let me tell you about a few GoDaddy customers that are part of that number, um, and they are absolutely thriving right now. So Chris Fryer is the co-founder of vegan pie business Magpie. They had an exciting debut of summer food festivals and events planned, along with supplying a number of pubs and bars across Newcastle. However, when events were cancelled and pubs were closed due to COVID-19, Magpie went online with GoDaddy and launched a local delivery service, which has been a huge success. And they're now hoping to expand their offering nationwide. What would you do if your business's main source of income all but disappeared overnight? That was the scenario that faced Monroe Farms based in the Highlands. In the past, the organic farm had been selling its products at, um, and produce at farmers markets and through wholesale to a local deli. When COVID-19 hit, the team behind the organic farm knew they had to try something new to keep selling. Munro Farm set up an online shop through GoDaddy and over the course of 90 days were generating £10,000 plus in revenue. So before we get started with our next topic area, we'd like to hear from you again with another quick fire poll. And this time the question is, coming soon, what support do you need most in the running of your business? Is it general trade business advice? Is it international trade? Is it profiling businesses? Opportunities to connect with like-minded business owners or access to networking events and training? So have your say now with the poll. It could, it's very exciting to see what you will pick. I think, you know, there's so much here, obviously there's a bit of crossover, but if you pick the one that most relates, um, I assure you we will answer as much of this as we possibly can. So, great, we've got the polls coming in. Okay, so general business advice and support has been the most popular one, um, which, you know, I, I completely understand that at the moment. It's been a very strange year, so we need all the advice we can get right now. 
With that in mind, I'd like to introduce you to Daniel Walton, business owner and member of the Herefordshire and Worcestershire Chamber of Commerce, a chamber that is part of the larger British Chamber of Commerce network, supporting small businesses with the services you just voted on during that poll. Daniel is the founder and managing director of AllPro. AllPro has a reputation for creating exceptional outdoor leisure products for its adventurous customers around the world. We'll be speaking to Daniel about his business journey, what he's learned about shifting the majority of sales online, and how the Herefordshire and Worcestershire Chamber has helped his business to grow. So welcome, Daniel. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, Frankie. How are you doing? Good, yeah, very good, very good. I could just hear the rain start outside, which is not the greatest oh. for my industry, but it's all good. Apart from <laughs> well, come rain or shine, right? You've got to get outside. and Yeah, 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 of course. And I think obviously <laughs> the year we've had, I think people are, are desperate to get away. And, and obviously we, we've sort of obviously reaped the benefit of the fact that people are restricted on where they can go. So it's been, mm. uh, it's been an unusually good year for us, despite everything. Well, that's great. It's good to know that some good has come out of this year. So... Tell us a bit about yourself and what inspired you to start your business. Yeah, so I started in, in this particular industry about 20 years ago, just over 20 years ago. I mean, interestingly, my first ever real job after leaving university was online. I, I worked for lastminute.com. So I was kind of very aware of kind of the effect of online selling in, from the very, very early days. But, but when it came to selling in the outdoor industry, the outdoor industry all been very much about little outdoor shops. You know, so you would go to a high street store, you'd buy a tent, you'd buy, you know, that kind of equipment. And so my past was really from a sales perspective. I would go out and I would sell these products to, to stores. And I decided in 2011 to set up my own business, to set up my own brand. And the, the idea behind All Pro is that we stand out, that, you know, we design products ourselves, which is very unique, which stands out from other brands. And we wanted to sell it into particular retailers. So that's kind of where we started uh, 10 years ago. Great. Wow. So and, and it's been, I imagine, quite a journey. You kind of touched upon how the last year has been really good for you. But can you tell us a bit more about how COVID-19 impacted your business and selling online? Yeah, of course. So, I mean, just going back to the start again a little bit in terms of, again, we set out this plan that we were going to be selling to stores, but retail changed really quickly, you know, sort of between 2011, 2013. And, and a lot of the stores we were selling to were closed down or they themselves were moving online. So we were left in a situation where we had less customers. So we were making a decision to try and put more and more of our products online. So actually we started as a brand that weren't going to be a B2C business. We weren't aiming to sell to customers directly. We were going to use other people to do that. But we set ourselves up to become a, a B2C business. And so we established the website, which is now, you know, 70% of, of what we sell through. And, and we, we set up everything behind that. So having set up things like customer services and having to, you know, look at how we dispatch product, looked at our international sales. So we moved all of that. And coming on to COVID, you know, uh, it, we, what we've seen over the last year is that all of that has moved on even further. So obviously more people are having to shop online, more people have found shopping online, online, you know, the convenience of it. And I think from a retailer's perspective, what we've done and what other retailers have done very well is we've adapted ourselves to make it easier for people to buy online. So, you know, from our perspective, you know, the biggest, the biggest issue around buying a tent is that you like to be able to see and feel it and kind of get a gauge of how big it is. So we've had to work a lot harder on things like video and ensuring that, you know, that people can actually, to some sense, touch and feel the product without literally touching and feeling it. So we've introduced things like augmented reality onto our website so people can, you know, view the tent in their particular space and kind of get a gauge of how big it is. And that a lot of that's come because of COVID because we realise now that, you know, there is no going back on this. You know, people are really now set, thankfully for us and thankfully for lots of other businesses, on buying online. Yeah, absolutely. And as, as Louis kind of touched upon, it's the importance of um, giving those details, isn't it? About really saying what the product is and over explaining it almost to people to help improve your sales. Yeah, yeah. I think we, we've sort of started to see customer services as not being a reaction to customers as being kind of a precursor to kind of stopping people asking questions. So actually you want to build a website that deals with all the potential questions you're going to be asked. And we work, you know, for example, with one partner uh, that's our review system. So all customers can go on, they can review our product, you know, once they've had them, they can review our service. But it, the same system also allows them to ask questions and, and get answers from us. So on any one of our particular product pages, a little bit like Amazon do, and you know, I think this has worked very well for them, 
there's a whole list of questions that people have already asked and then the answers for those. We've got a very strong FAQ page, you know, so again, you've got that kind of frequency. And then Louis was talking about videos before and the most important videos are where you're answering somebody's question. And again, that's the case for us. You know, we've got a very strong YouTube channel. We've got a series of questions that have been asked and then the answers for them. And what we're trying to do is make sure that, you know, even if it's a, you know, one o'clock in the morning when people are on our website buying and they've got questions, they can get the answers to them. And that kind of frees up our time to be doing other things. And obviously then we're not dealing with the, you know, issues of customer services after somebody's bought because they've not got what they wanted because hopefully we've answered the questions prior. Brilliant. So that's a great idea as well for your social content is considering answering questions, using it as a channel like that, as well as just publishing things. It's a Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, through blogs, again, I think that's been mentioned already today. Uh, you know, I, I think earlier when we were, we were looking at the websites, you know, blogs are very, very important. Whereas I think in the past, they were seen as a bit of a nice to have. Mm. I think they're really, really important now. And I saw some questions that were coming up in, in, in the Q&A around, you know, if, if you're not able, for example, to look at pay-per-click advertising, what else can you do? Blogs are now very powerful. People refer to those for information. So I think particularly in, in our sector, that's worked very well, as is having videos, you know, and I, and I think just generally having a presence online, whether it be on the website or on social media, it's just really good customer services, just allowing people to look up the questions themselves and find the answers because you've already answered them. And actually for us as a brand, it's kind of puts in a position where to some degree we've become experts in our field that then people mm. trust because we're there, we've got presence and we're answering questions. We spent a lot of time actually just thinking about the last year, we spent a lot of time doing that last year. When we were that initial period of the first lockdown where people were told they couldn't go out and they couldn't do this, they couldn't do that. Obviously, for a business, it relies on people being able to go out and, and, and do what they want. Um, we put all of our resources into that, into making sure that, you know, when people were allowed out and we knew it was going to be a boom, you know, a boom time for us, that those questions were going to be answered and ready for them. Brilliant. It's, yeah, that flexibility is so important to move with the times. Um, so how would you describe the Herefordshire and Worcestershire Chamber to someone that doesn't know what it is? Um, and how have they helped you as a business owner? Okay, yeah, so I mean, there's, um, I mean, a Chamber of Commerce generally it is a really good kind of support network. And, and I think because they're regionally based, uh, it's really good because they, they know what's going on in your particular area. The people you're going to get in contact with and the people you're going to be working with is within the Chamber are all people that have set up businesses like you have in your local area. So I've come across all the same issues, all the same problems, and probably sharing the same problems now, you know, whether it be you know, concerns over Brexit, whether it be concerns over COVID and the recovery, you know, over bringing people back into the workplace, all those kind of issues can be covered by, and, it, and very often it's not the, a lot of what we, what we talk about, particularly within e-commerce, it all sounds quite, you know, quite glamorous and sexy and it's doing this, that and the other, but we, we're still businesses and we've still got the mundane stuff of running businesses day to day. And actually, the chamber for me have taken a lot of that work away from me or at least supported me and been able to do a lot of that. So I think going back again to when we first started, you know, for the first two or three years, Olpro was pretty much myself on my own in a warehouse with nobody really to talk to other than customers when they rang up occasionally and bought a pallet or something. And I never thought about getting involved in, you know, the Chamber of Commerce or, or any other organisation like that. But as soon as I did, you know, it got me into networking. So I got involved with, like I say, understanding other companies, knowing that what I was doing, you know, was not always bad or, or you know, was actually quite good, learning from other people as well. And then the biggest thing for me is that it, it was the awards, the kind of game changer. So we entered, you know, some of the local awards. Uh, we won in 2018 the best use of social media at the local awards with, with, with Herefordshire and Worcestershire. And then we got put onto the national awards, which was incredible. And we were up against some really big names and we were finalists and the best use of social media in, in, in 2018, which you just think like that. I know, yeah, just be down to like the last four when, like I say, we'd spent years signing a warehouse in, you know, it's somewhere in the back end of Worcestershire. Kind, kind of just sounds, you know, sort of really weird to then be winning awards. And so we've gone on, we've just won a Queen's Award this year for international trade, so. It's been, been a really, really good journey and a, and, a, and a big part of it has been down to being a member of the Chamber of Commerce. 
That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. It must be so gratifying to get all of this. Like after all your years of graft, you're getting these awards and things are going really well. So it shows you the journey's worthwhile and, and engaging with things like the British Chamber of Commerce can really benefit that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's good for the staff. You know, it's good for the staff yeah. to know that what we're doing is, is worthwhile. That, you know, I, I think we all feel pride in, in what we're doing, but obviously, you know, in the throes of a really, in a really busy July, you know, like we had last year, where people mm. are working, you know, ridiculous hours, working as hard as they possibly can, you know, dedicating so much time to the, and effort to the company. It's nice at the end of it that we then get recognised for that. Mm. So, yeah, I think it's really worthwhile doing. Amazing. So, You've obviously been doing this for a long time. At what point in your journey did you become a member of your local chamber? And when would you recommend people join? At what point in their journeys? We, we were late. I mean, we were about four years in, I would say. And, and I, I would say we would have benefited so much more to have been members earlier on. So to me now, if I was starting again, there is no doubt, and I'm not being paid to say this, <laughs> but, 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 I, but, but I would definitely join day one because there is so much you learn um, you know, not just about the general basics of the business, the kind of boring stuff, but actually about e-commerce, about uh, online selling, because the chamber, uh, you know, got experts already within your local chamber. There will be experts that are members that will be able to help, you know, and, and very often be able to help without any kind of, you know, money changing hands or having to talk, you know, having to pay somebody to come on board and help you. The support will just be there. So I think it's important. And also the, the award side of things for us, the social proof that it gave us to customers to say, you can trust this company because, you know, they're award winning. You know, had we had that earlier on, I've no doubt that would have benefited us as well. Absolutely. Um, so as well, speaking of growing your business, um, you're become, starting to reach international markets. So how have you used GoDaddy domains to enter these new international markets for your business? Yeah, so the big thing, obviously, about selling international is you want customers, when they look at you as a business, to, to think that they can trust you. And a big part of that is all about internationalization. So you've got the real key things, like, obviously, your website's going to be in their language. That makes mm. perfect sense, at least the primary language of that country, and also in, in, in that currency as well. And the other big major thing, which a lot of people don't tend to concern themselves with, is to have the right domain. So that when you're going to that website, so example in France, you know, we've got allpro.fr. So that immediately when a customer logs onto that website, they're on allpro.fr. And we use, we work with GoDaddy to do all of that. So um, over about a two year period, we went through just buying every potential domain that we needed and just working with GoDaddy to make sure that we get everything that we could. And, and also as well, a, a kind of key part of that is although our brand is allpro, in some countries, allpro, might be taken or it might it might be a reference to something else so again we, we, we did consult with GoDaddy about alternatives and kind of work around that as well so yeah it was a really good and, and important thing that we did that's a really important consideration is like you say is adapting to those markets as you expand and considering those kind of local potential translations and things like that yeah 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 I, I mean the whole the whole thing around translation is a it, you know not a minefield I mean it's a real opportunity but it's kind of understanding that the way in which you know we, we might refer to particular things within the UK you know might not be the way in which people refer to things say for example in Germany so you know for example you know we, we, you know when we're talking about a tent we, a tent's got guidelines on the side of it which are the things that we peg down to keep it in place now the reference to guidelines might be completely different in other countries so it's really important not just to translate the phrase guidelines because it might mean absolutely zero, and, you know, if we go to Poland or or anywhere else like that. But the, the whole thing about selling abroad is, and, and we wanted to do it from day one, was that you know don't ever restrict yourself just to the UK, because you know the, there is clearly a bigger bigger world out there. And for the majority of products, they can be sold in all these different countries. And, and whilst the different countries themselves might not be waiting for you know they weren't waiting for all pro to come along and sell them tens, you know there is a massive population waiting there that could potentially buy tents. So yeah, so we we worked through uh, we worked through marketplaces uh, a little bit to establish our name, but then really realised that we needed a base and we needed the website. And that's where the GoDaddy domains came in. And I mean, you've kind of you've talked about it quite a lot. Obviously, the website is a really big thing for you. But how important would you say your website has been for the success of your business? 
it's absolutely vital, you know, absolutely vital. Um, in, in order to sell a product like, to, like ours, um, across even a relatively small country like the UK, you'd be talking about needing 25 decent sized shops to sell the product. So within that, you're talking about, you know, 20,000 square foot stores, 25 of them across the country. You know, the costs are just so prohibitive to be able to do kind of bricks and more store, but actually to have a website you know, which we've got complete control over. So we're controlling the brand, we're controlling, uh, we're obviously gathering social proof to, you know, to improve people's purchase with, with us as well. All of that would just be impossible kind of in the real world, but but on, on a website, you know, that's been really, really important to us. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Daniel. Um, really inspiring to hear your story. And we're re I'm really excited to see how Old Pro continues to grow and evolve. And I'm going to have to have a browse now because I've been getting out more during lockdown because what else was there to do but to go for walks and exploring things. So I think the next step is to get some gear from you. Thank you, Frankie. That's a pleasure. Okay. Lovely. Thank you so much. Great. So uh, after that really inspiring session, I'm now going to hand back over to Ben Law, head of GoDaddy UK and Ireland, to close off the session. Over to you, Ben. Thank you, Frankie. Thank you so much to our speakers, Chef, Louis and Daniel. Uh, I'm certainly going to be looking out for some gear for myself on, on the back of that. Um, and thank you all for joining us. Um, we know how busy you are. We really hope you found this session useful. Um, I've been trying to engage on the Q&A and in the chat. There's been lots, lots going on. So thank you all for being so active in this live and, and virtual event. If you do have a couple of minutes to complete our post-event survey, the link should be appearing in the chat any second now. We would be extremely grateful for that. It's gonna really help us as we move on to future events in this series and beyond. Speaking of which, if you haven't registered for our final event in the series on maintaining an online presence post-pandemic, then please follow the link in the chat to sign up now. I think what today has shown us that in the UK, the micro business community is in great health despite the challenges that continue to disrupt our daily lives. We're optimistic about the future. And as we've seen and heard in this session, with the right support, a fledgling business with a good idea has no limits. We're passionate about supporting everyday entrepreneurs at GoDaddy, and we're laser focused on providing all of our customers with the tools they need to succeed online. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, we love to feature our GoDaddy customers in our advertising, across our social media, and even in our bigger TV and radio campaigns, sharing stories, with our wider and broader audience. Just look at how we featured Magpie, for example. So if you'd like to be featured in our event write-up, do share your business story with us and tag us across social media at GoDaddy UK. That's everything from me and the team today. And we've got a short video to recap on the session. Thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day.